All right. We're joined by Philip Big down there in Tasmania. Mate, there's been a little bit of information and things popping up down there in relation to the antiques firearms new law. Do you want to go through and let people know what's going on? Yeah, absolutely. There's been a lot of uh, speculation about this uh, since January, since the cancellation of exemption number four. And uh, given people are a bit on edge about this, uh, I thought we should finally get it out there as quick as possible, uh, given the information I've received within the past couple of days. Uh, Before we get into it, I just want to quickly touch on a couple of things. Uh, Antique firearms, no other state, even Western Australia, considers pre-1900 muskets or obsolete cartridge guns to be firearms. Right, so... What's happening here is something that uh, has never been done before and it's a bit of a concern. Every other state, there's no registration or licensing requirements. Um, you can put them wherever you want, hang them on the wall. You know, be proud about your heritage, heirloom, antique firearms. Um, it's also worth mentioning that antique firearms don't use modern powders and ammunition. If you're going to do that, you're going to have a bad time. Say goodbye to your arms for one. Um, locks and caps and things like that impossible to get i mean i can't even get hodgkin's h4350 in tasmania it's just impossible so that being said i want to quickly touch on what the plans are uh, from the government at the moment from the liberal tasmanian government completely different to what they were saying back in january Um, so at the moment it still stands you will have to have uh, storage requirements, licensing requirements, registration requirements, fees, charges, so on and so forth. However, at the moment, you can still get exemptions one-on-one basis. So the exemption number four was a blanket exemption put in in 1997, and the commission has decided that's not good enough anymore. Um, It isn't covered in our act, so it's gone. We don't have antique firearms in our act. So I want to let everyone know what the plan changes are so they can feel a little bit better about things. Uh, There will be no licensing requirements. There will be no requirements to do a firearm safety course, uh, unlike what they're saying at the moment. Uh, The process will be free to uh, register your firearms and, well, antique firearms, so on and so, so forth. Um, just be uh, contact details about the type of firearm, that type of stuff, obviously. There will be no requirements to stamp or engrave your antique firearm, and that was a massive concern because could you imagine an heirloom antique firearm spending your family for generations and bang, big stamp in it? I mean, that would just break my heart. And uh, thankfully, I think they've seen a bit of reason there. Um if an antique firearm is to be displayed, this is where it gets a bit tricky too. Uh, it has to be safely secured to a rack or a locked display cabinet uh, fitted with glass or similar material. I have said it, if it's going to be caveated with you know glass, um, it will have to be laminated safety glass 6.38 or 8.38 rather than just float glass because anyone can just tap and break through it so if they're going to go down the avenue do it properly rather than what they were initially saying of bulletproof glass which is like fifteen hundred dollars a square meter absolutely crazy to even suggest that who's going to pay that um so what they're thinking about is also dog tagging antique firearms which a lot of people in around australia are going well that's just still crazy it's an antique firearm you you want to put a registration serial number on an antique firearm but if they're going to go down this path, I think it's a good way to go. A lot of people probably won't be happy about it, but it's no different to having a tag on your um, nice set of antlers uh, from your stag in Tasmania because we are still uh, game regulated, obviously. So I want people to be a bit more relaxed about this. If you have any concerns, reach out to us at the Party Shoes Fish Party of uh, uh, Tasmania or contact Firearm Service Tasmania. They're there to help you. They're not there to come after you. Ultimately, at the end of the day, when this goes through, it's uh, really important that you're not caught out. Um, If you have those antique firearms 
after this goes through, there's no excuses and they will come after you. Uh, so let's do the right thing here. Um, and the other issue is people are selling their antique firearms really cheap because they're like, well, I don't want them to be destroyed by the government, which is totally understandable. But also if you have an heirloom, family heirloom, hold on to it. Um, contact firearm services, get that exemption that you can get so you don't necessarily have to go and do the firearm safety course and all this type of stuff straight away. Wait till this comes through um, and and work with them. Uh, they're, they're there to help you at the end of the day. Um, this is a letter from the minister outlining these things. And it's good progress compared to where we started in January. I think. Unfortunately, it came to that. They just went, everyone got an email and a letter saying, oh, exemption number four is gone. Uh, here you are. You have to go and buy a $500 safe. You have to spend $400 on doing the TAFE course and so on, so on. So we are making progress. Uh, a lot of people in other states will be going, that's just crazy. We may even be a test case for the rest of the Australia. Um, we just don't know. We're, we've seen that with the community safety uh, firearms amendment bill last year some of those things have crossed the border and gone to other states as we're seeing west australia and queensland um, but at the moment antique firearms that's what we're here to talk about so i don't know what it's like in new south wales i know queensland it's uh, pretty cruisy because at the end of the day it's an antique firearm you're not going to walk around with a 10 kilo piece of steel threatening people um as we're saying, you know, there's more damage being done with cars and knives than anything. So to say that it's a community safety issue is just bullshit, I think. Um, and unfortunately, we're stuck in this scenario, but we've just got to get the information out to people so they're not going to lose their heirloom antiques or, you know, private collection. Um, just try and do the right thing uh, by the people and get it out there. Firearm services have nothing up. The minister's done nothing, hasn't even put any plans up like I have here uh, that, that's been released and people are being misled, I think. And it's a bit of um, bit of a shame, really. They're there to serve the people and yet they're not telling the people what they're planning on doing. So we'll see what happens, but that's where we stand at the moment. And uh, we're here to help um, as best we can. Um, as, as candidates of a political party and, and uh, firearms enthusiasts ourselves, hunters, collectors. So just uh, everyone keep that in mind, you know. Mate, appreciate you coming on and it makes no sense to me sitting here hearing some of these things of what's going on down there, um, an antique firearm, mm. and it's how it's a public safety threat, I have zero idea. Unbelievable to think they're going to stamp or engrave a serial number into them. I mean, imagine you had a nice wooden or timber piece of furniture. Imagine getting that engraved because you had to. Uh, oh, just it, it's mind blowing. But hopefully, it gets sorted out, mate. Keep doing what you're doing, and if you're in Tassie or you know someone in Tassie that might be impacted, please get the word out. Have a listen. Share the podcast and. Get in touch with the registry or Shooters Farmers Fishers Party. No, sounds good. And uh, I mean, we are in Tassie, unfortunately. Um, it may come to the point where those antique cupboards will have to be sanded without a splinter because someone might get hurt by it. But uh, God knows where we're going to go. But at the moment, let's just uh, try and work to <laughs> a better outcome for uh, licensed firearms owners in Tasmania. Mate, agree. Thanks for your time. Appreciate it, uh, listeners. Bye for now. Thanks, Matt.